Well, good day, Park Church. I'm Pastor Shea, and this is your March 16th uh, midweek moment. If you've been tracking along with us so far, we've been working through the book of John. I hope you've been reading it. It's pretty good. Uh, tracking through the book of John, looking at the I am statements. And these statements are great because they help us understand Jesus' identity, and they also help us understand what his ministry to us is like. And this is important because his ministry affects us all. For example, have you ever faced uncertainty? Uh, uncertainty about your future or where you're going, perhaps where you'll end up even when you die? In today's passage, this is exactly what's happening. On the night before Jesus' crucifixion, during the Passover meal, Jesus begins to prepare his disciples for the road ahead. And of course, he's been doing this for some time, though they seem to lack understanding. But Jesus knows what's coming in his life, that he's going to die on the cross. Uh, and he knows the trials and tribulations that his disciples are going to face. So he wants to prepare them. And he wants to ensure that they know everything that they need to know. That they have everything so that they can maintain a trust for him and end up where he is essentially destined them to end up. So, picking up in John chapter 14, we are going to look at John chapter 14, verses 4 through 6. So let's take a look. And Jesus says, You know the way to the place where I am going. And verse 5, Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in reviewing these uh, few verses, Jesus mentions three particular things that he is. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So let's look at those three things. First one, the way. Well, long before believers in Christ were actually called Christians, which was a derogatory term, it meant little Christians or whatever, it was, it was actually a, a mocking term, they were referred to as the people of the way. And they were called this because they followed Jesus, who was always talking about the way, the way people should go, or the way to God the Father, or the way to the kingdom. And the way was, a, was synonymous with the road. So it was, it was like a direction. It was, it was the right path that they should be taking. For example, Matthew 7, verse 14, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is narrow and the way or road is hard. So this is one of the phrases that Jesus was you know, uh, known for saying. Similar to the I am the door statement, the way is ultimately representing the exclusivity of Jesus. No one comes to the Father except by the right way, the right road. The way is none other than Jesus himself. And that's what he was trying to imprint on his followers, his disciples. The way to get to God the Father, the way to get to heaven, the way to enter the kingdom of God is through the Son and the Son alone. So, moving on, the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. Jesus continues to build upon the way with the truth, almost to say that you can believe I'm the way because I'm also the truth. First century Jews regarded the word of God as inerrant and true. Uh, Psalm 119 says, all your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. But Jesus kind of took it a step further and he says, um, I am truth personified. For example, John 1.14 said, the word of God, or the word, became flesh. It's speaking of Jesus, and made his dwelling among, among us. Jesus was the incarnate word of, go of God, and he was the source of all truth. So not only was he the way, he was also the truth. And then finally, Jesus is the life. Jesus asserts that he is the source of all life. The disciples should not worry about the consequences of his death and departure from this world. Instead, they should trust him. Trust him as the way, because he is the truth, and therefore the source of life. And of course, reiterating the I am the good shepherd, Jesus declared that he was going to lay down his life for his sheep 
and then take it up again. Jesus was saying he has authority over life and death. And in doing so, Jesus promised, because I live, you also will live, John 14, 19. So in this passage, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his death and absence. And he wanted to make sure that they had everything they needed so that they could have a hope and a future. He wanted to make sure that his followers placed their trust in him alone. He was the way to the Father. He was truth personified, and in him alone was eternal life made available. So I think we all understand how that's applicable to us. It's all because of Jesus and who he claimed to be. Well, I have a few announcements for you for this week. Uh, first one is Prayer Summit. That is going to be this Sunday, March 20th at 6 p.m. We'll be meeting in the auditorium and we'll be uh, meeting corporately to pray over some of the needs within our church, within our community, within our country, and probably the world in general, as we all know what's going on with Ukraine. So we just invite you to come out to the Prayer Summit. These have been powerful um, gatherings and we just encourage you to be a part of it. We're called to pray, and this is a great opportunity. Uh, family night finale and car race. This is gonna be happening next week, uh, Tuesday night, uh, starting at 6 p.m. Uh, there'll be free ice cream uh, to anybody who wants to come, so come and cheer on the Awana kids and the 5-6 kids as they race the cars they've made. We've got this thing where you, you've got these little pine wood derby boxcar kits and they carve them out, they design and paint the cars and then we race them down a big long track and we've got a big brand new track for the kids to race on with all the bells and whistles and it's going to be a great time. So please come starting at 6 p.m. with the registration and the ice cream and then at 6.30 the races begin. And then finally, um, the community Easter egg hunt is going to be on Saturday, April 16th. Um, Pastor Joe mentioned this uh, a couple weeks ago. This is one of the things the Park Church wants to do to let the community know that we are here and that we want to serve them and that we want to include everybody to be a part of our family. So this big Easter egg hunt is going to happen at Broadmoor Park. And we've got 55,000 chocolate eggs. Various teams have been packing the eggs and sealing them and just getting ready for that event. And you're invited to help out. We need lots of help packing eggs and we need lots of help on April 16th with setting up, cleaning up, and then serving. There's gonna be lots of little events at this event with a petting zoo and we've got some professional basketball players there and we've got a craft table and of course the Easter egg hunt. So we're expecting big things and we need a team and we'd love it if you could be a part of it. So, I hope you enjoy the devotional. I hope you're up to date with the announcements. I just wanna say God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.